This is Brian with ScreenFiles.com in review with the first review for ScreenFiles in 2020. And the movie I'm looking at is Frank Calhoun's Prey. And Frank Calhoun, for me as a director, I really like his work. The first movie of his that I saw was P2. And it was okay. Scenario was a little bit outlandish, but on the whole, pretty good movie. The second movie I saw was Maniac. And my God, this is such a good movie. The imagery is very dreamy, yet horrific at the same time. Very interesting movie. It makes Elijah Wood look a little crazy, but frankly, Elijah Wood looks crazy most of the time. So it's just such an effective movie. So I was going into Prey very optimistic that this would be an awesome movie, and it's not. In hindsight, if you look at both P2 and Maniac, they share something in common. Namely, they weren't written by Frank Cafoon. He actually co-wrote Prey. And sometimes that distance is important because Prey is not a bad movie by any stretch. It's actually really interesting, but it doesn't quite gel. By which I mean it opens with and the opening is important, by the way. Watch the opening. It opens with these old Polaroids being shown. And the color is, I believe, a very earth tony kind of yellow, which implies age. They weren't taken in the recent chronology of the movie. These are things of the past. So they're taking pictures of a very idyllic, almost culty scenario very reminiscent of Reverend Jim Jones, frankly. And so the movie then moves on from that. Though keep those photos in mind. They play a role. And in fact, I should mention, the movie is telling two different stories. The stories will converge, I want to say, about halfway through. Converge recognizably, that is. But there are two stories being told with prey. And one story is not nearly as interesting as the other. So, as I was saying, the second story revolves around a young person named Toby. And Toby is, like most young people, which is to say, a bit of a lazy fuck. He wants to do his thing, he's playing with his phone, his dad wants him to help him with his car. He decides not to do it, and his dad is killed. Now, the, this is where the movie kind of, you can see it going off the rails a little bit. Not seriously, but you can see this is heading to a cliff. He doesn't help his dad, and his dad is killed and his car stolen by two, I want to say muggers or some such people. Now, I could swear they're dressed as chimps. I don't know quite why they're dressed as chimps. Is this the movie trying to say something? Is this some kind of commentary? Because if not, it's really, really dumb. Why are they wearing matching masks and costumes? It's really stupid. But what happens is, is that Toby is sent on this kind of retreat. And this is where I get a little confused because Toby's dad was killed through no fault of Toby's. He was acting like a lazy little schmuck earlier in the movie, but he didn't kill his dad. And also, I would argue that if Toby were there, Toby's not the most physical of people. Kind of scrawny, if truth be told. And so if Toby were there, his dad would likely be just as dead, the car would be just as stolen, and Toby would likely be dead as well. So he's, for some reason, and I, this is what's so odd for me, it's that Toby is obviously had a trauma, a major trauma in his life. So he's sent to some kind of survival camp? What about, I don't know, him facing the guilt he has apparently over the death of his father? Why not address that? But no, instead he's sent to some survival camp in Malaysia, 
which is an indicator Toby's parents have lots of fucking money and clearly don't know what to do with it. And why is this happening? It's not that it's bad, it just makes no sense. And if someone knows different, please tell me why if someone dies, you would send your child to a three-day survival camp on a remote island in a Malaysian archipelago. This does not make any sense. I mentioned earlier that Toby is not the most physical of people. And to illustrate this point, he gets on the boat, he immediately barfs, and he's hit in the head with um, a mast, which is spinning around in a storm. So Toby is just the opposite of a person you'd send to these type of situations. He's not very capable. And in a modern context, I get that. I mean, why would he be? He's been sitting on his couch playing with his phone. So he gets to this island, and here's where the story about the Polaroids come in. Because that cult, church group, whatever the hell it is, we witnessed earlier, was on this remote island. And so Toby goes to, Toby is, I should say, placed on the island. And he meets a survivor of the cult. And she tells him that he can't, or he, he should not go to a certain part of the island because her, her mother is there and her mother would kill him. Something to that effect. And so this is just not making much sense. And the story I should mention keeps flashing back to Toby working with his dad on his car. It, that, it seems almost as if it's trying to bring him a sense of peace with the death of his father, but it's really not. It's, it's an odd reference. It's not him coming to terms with the idea that he was not responsible for his father's death. That's not what it's about, not as far as I can see. It's just odd flashbacks to him and his father. And so I don't know why they keep doing it. And I mentioned earlier that Frank Calhoun co-wrote Prey. And it's just a messy movie. I at first thought it would be very Lord of the Flies. And it follows that template because Toby becomes very adept at survival. Now keep in mind something. He's only been on this island initially, it was three days. I don't think he spent two weeks there, frankly, in the time that the movie comes from its beginning to its end. I don't even think it's been two weeks, though it's kind of hard to tell beyond the initial three or four days. So in any case, he becomes quite adept at survival, and he's making booby traps and all sorts of things, things that he frankly should not be able to do in the time that he spent on that island because, as I said, he hasn't spent enough time and he's not a very capable person. When I say capable person, besides the physical aspect, working with your hands, he, he's shown no aptitude for these things before this moment, which is because movie. But that's a little irritating and it's not a real reason, it's a sloppy reason and it goes to the writing, which is a bit sloppy. Though, it begins with the cult. Well, I call it a cult, but it's certainly a Christian sect, though why set up on an island with no inhabitants? You're clearly in Malaysia, no less. You're clearly trying to get away from people, i.e. a cult. So, the movie begins with that. It changes to a very Lord of the Fly-ish type movie. And if it had just stayed with that, it would have been actually really good, I think. Oh, by the way, this is an aside, but I think it's worth mentioning. This island is lush with vegetation. It's beautiful. Why do I mention that? Because you don't have vegetation without insects. There are insects on this island, to be sure, because the camera will show spiders every once in a while. There are bats. Bats feed on things like insects. So there have to be insects on this island. But Toby is walking around with shorts and a tank top, and he doesn't at all acknowledge the presence of insects. Not even to say, oh, these things keep biting me. Nothing. He does not 
at all notice the presence of insects, which bugs me a little bit because in any tropical type setting, you're going to get bugs, lots of bugs, biting bugs, but he got none of that. So it's a weird thing. It's not a be all and end all of the movie. If you're going to play realism, be realistic. That environment should have been teeming with friggin' insects, and he should have been bitten more often than not. But that didn't happen, but it was a little thing that irritated me. So, as I was saying, Prey begins as a kind of culty movie in its opening, changes to Lord of the Flies, to change again to something else. And the something else it changes to is frankly a little bit ludicrous. It's not that it's bad, mind you. You can do what you want, as far as movies are concerned, if you can do it well. If you can mesh all this stuff and have it gel, more power to you. The problem is, Frank Calfoon and his co-writer could not do that. This movie feels like disparate parts kind of mashed together in an effort to make something that makes sense. And it really doesn't. In fact, if there were a problem with Prey, it's its ambition. If it had just been a simpler movie, if it had just dealt with more, let's say, the cult angle, or more of the Lord of the Flies angle, it probably would have worked really well, especially based upon Frank Calhoun's directoral style. I think it would have worked really, really well. Unfortunately, it tries to be too many things and ends up kind of muddled. It's an interesting film. It's not a bad film. It's quite watchable, in fact. It's surprisingly very light on jump scares. I want to say there are two or three. They're not a lot. It's atmospheric. Not, it could have been more, but it had a nice atmosphere to it. And it works in terms, it's not terrible, but if it had just went towards simplicity as opposed to needless complexity, Prey would have been awesome. As it stands, it's watchable. It's not a bad movie. It's well acted, but it's... Mm, it's, just, it's a bit disposable and unfortunately forgettable. So that was Prey. Did you see it? Did you enjoy it? Why? Why not? Let me know down below. Peace.